Hey, Kelly, how are you doing? Good, how are you? Good. So I'm excited for our first episode here of the podcast, Let's Talk Real. So um, I'm Ismaini, Realtor Mentor, VXP Realty, and also the team leader of the Ismaini Domiciano team. And here's my partner, Kelly. Kelly? Good morning. Um, I am a mortgage loan originator with Sierra Pacific Mortgage. Um, I've been in the business for 20 years with mortgages and real estate, and most recently with Sierra for the past two. Um, and I'm excited for this morning to kind of go over our topics and what the market's saying right now with, uh, with lending. Yes, yes. So just to get started, I'll get started with a little uh, summary of the market update for you guys. Um, starting with Cumberland County, I made some notes here. So we have currently this month, one and a half months of the accumulated market, which means we have enough inventory for one and a half months um, for people that don't understand that. Uh, and in comparison to last month, that's an increase. Uh, last month we had only 1.1, uh, which shows that we're having more houses in the market, uh, which is good news for the buyers. It's, it shows a trend of going into a buyer's market. Last year, it's just in comparison, um, we only had 0.8. So you really shows last year we definitely had a really strong seller's market houses were you know not enough for the month the current month so um the current average average day is on price of four cumberland county it's 19 days which is a huge increase when we were seeing just about three to five days on market now we're looking at 19 days on market for cumberland county um really showing that that change in the market now houses are not selling as fast as before um the average price sold in cumberland county is three hundred and twenty two thousand dollars um we have 280 properties that were listed back in october and from those 280 258 went under contract uh, and this month so far we listed 196 listings and from those, 127 went under contract. So it does show that kind of one and a half that we were seeing. Uh, last year, just to have an idea, uh, for the month of November, we actually sold 290 houses. Um, so we're not necessarily halfway there, considering that we are already at November 18th as of today. So you can see the trend is kind of slowing down as far as how many houses are going under. Now, same thing for Dauphin County, we have one and a half months of, actually 1.3 months of accumulated market. Last month we had 1.2, so it, it, we have a little bit of overplus, but not much. And comparison to last year's 0.9, again, same trend, we're seeing more houses stay in the market uh, month over month. Average days on market for Dauphin County is 18 days, so very close to Cumberland County. Average sold price is two hundred forty-seven thousand five hundred dollars. Um, we in October we listed three hundred thirty-four properties, and from those three hundred thirty-four, three hundred went under contract. Uh, this month so far we have two hundred seven new listings, and from those one hundred forty-five went under contract. So it does kind of show we're nearing the end of the month, and we don't have all the two hundred seven that went, you know, as a new listing going under contract. In comparison to last year, we had 335 uh, houses that went under contract in November. So at 145, we're really not keeping that pace. Again, showing that trend. Same thing as Cumberland County. Lancaster County, we have 1.1 months of accumulated inventory. So it looks like Cumberland County is a still seller's market overall. Uh, that just shows that we don't have that many houses in the market and they are selling as they come on market. Uh, the average days on market, though, is 21 days now for uh, Lancaster County, uh, which shows a trend that this my accumulation might increase in the next couple of months. Um, the average um, price sold for Lancaster County is three hundred forty-five thousand dollars and nine hundred. Um, in October, we had 463 houses listed, and uh, from those, 443 went under contract in October. So again, they are selling as they are coming alive. Um, this month so far, we had 292 new listings, and from those, 168 already went under contract in November, which shows a, a keeping up the, the pace with last year's of 427 total under contract in November. That's what I have. So what do you yeah. think about that, Kelly? Do you think um, 
is what do you, what is what is it? Is it good news for the sellers or for the buyers? <laughs> well, um, it's a good news for the buyers because they are they're on the market longer, which is definitely a help. Um, and obviously, the trend has a lot to do with interest rates. <laughs> yeah, um, long to they went up so high so quickly and they're really not high um this is actually kind of a normal interest rate market it's just that i was quoting people three percent at the beginning of the year and now we're quoting seven and that's yes. a huge jump in a year yeah. and we definitely got spoiled with the three percent right we did we yeah. did so if you look over time interest rates are still good um you know they're still lower than what they were many years ago, you know, when our parents bought a house at, you know, 15, 16%. Yeah. Um, yeah. And where the rates are going to go, they're probably still going to go up a little bit. We don't know, obviously, because we can't predict it. But, you know, it is what it is. Rates are, they're not bad, but they're higher than what they were. Um, so to counteract that, we, what I'd like to talk about is our buy down options. Okay. And we have three, um, we have a two, one, a one, one and a one zero or one oh buy down. And I want to go over the most popular, which is our two, one. And with the two, one, um, the example I'm going to give is with a purchase price of 600,000 or loan amount of 600,000 over 30 years in the first year, if your interest rate is 6.75, um, in the first year, your interest rate will be 4.75. So that's, it goes down two points. And then in the mm -hmm. second year, the interest rate is 5.75. And in that first year, you have uh, $761.71 of monthly savings. And then in the second year, you have $390.15 a month in savings, which totals 13822 and that's where we that's how we determine what the buy down amount is so okay. that thirteen thousand is the amount of the buy down so it's all calculated in a formula um, but when it comes the the benefit to sellers um is we would look at it as seller assist um and then they would pay for that whole amount of seller assist and the benefits are it attracts new and old listings for people yeah. um, the sellers don't have to change a lot of times when we do seller assist we tend to lower it to get seller assist but in this case the seller can give some assistance keep the purchase price the same but it also benefits the buyer in buying the house with doing the buy down rate um, the buyer is always pre-approved at the note rate but they have that lower interest, um, the lower payment for the for the first and second years, which gives them a little bit more power to do things to the homes that they're moving into. Um, it, the another benefit is um, the the seller concession. Like I said, it, it lowers the amount, but it gives more options for um, the homes being on the market. And like I said, we, we are looking at it more of like a seller assist because it benefits both both the buyer and the seller. Yeah. And um, so I think the key thing is really like the, the buyers to understand that, yes, you will be reducing your rate in a, in a term of like two years, but at the same time, you do have to pay it up front. So it makes more sense if you're able to negotiate that with the seller, but maybe it won't make so much sense if you are not able to get that to happen right so you have to really look at a case by case buyer to buyer to see if that would be beneficial to them or not and, and uh, that monthly payment too like how much reduction you see would that be significant and enough for you to rather pay up front or you know doing the, the firm yes and the other thing i'm telling people is most homeowners the average homeowner refinances within the first three to five years of living in their home yeah. so with the two one buy down they have that savings over the first two years of living in their house and then you know when the market levels out you know they may only have to be up at that note rate for 
maybe another year. And then, you know, when it comes to the, you know, the interest rates going down, which we will have another refi boom, it, you know, it's bound to happen with the way the market is. Um, history shows that it'll happen. You yeah. know, it'll be time for them to refinance and maybe they'll have equity or, you know, or just to get that lower payment, um, you know, have a, a lower term on the loan. But the big thing is going to be getting the lower interest rates but the refi boom will happen and the two one buy down is is that's the reason why it's the most popular because probably within the next two to three years they'll be looking to refinance into yeah. a lower interest rate and i know i was looking and you can correct me if i'm wrong we are probably all expecting this kind of rate to come down within two years from now i think it was like 18 months or something like yep. that Right. Yeah, we're predicting. predicting <laughs> yeah, we don't have a crystal ball, but yeah, um, there's, there's definitely you know, things. We're thinking about 18 months, give or take, that we'll we'll see the market start to level out, and um, you may notice interest rates start to go down before the market actually completely levels out. Um, but you know, we'll we'll see. We'll see how it goes. We. We can only we can promise, right? Just a disclosure. We are just, uh, you know, <laughs> talking and estimating here based on what we see in the market. But there is that, you know, tendencies that showing that the interest rates are going to be dropping probably around the 18th to 24 month mark from now. So the two and one buy down. That's why it's the most popular is because mm -hmm. it's that two year that we're waiting for those rates to drop down. And as soon as you're out of the two and one, you can refinance it. Uh, you are allowed to refinance, no problem, even before that, right, Kelly? Um, there's no penalty. And there's refinance. no prepayment penalties you need to worry about. So, yes, you can absolutely refinance. Everybody has a different reason for refinancing, um, whether it's interest rates, equity, you know, getting cash out to do improvements on their house. Um, yeah, there's, you know, there's a lot of reasons. But, you know, we will only do it if it makes sense for you. Um, everybody's situation is different. And one thing that's important to to remind the buyers too that out there are considering this option is that um, when they are opting in into the two and one by down or three two one or one on zero, um, they're still being qualified on the highest rate that they're yes. supposed to be in, uh, regardless of whether they're starting a little bit lower. So um, that's something to keep in mind too, because um, in case. It does not make sense, right? Let's say you don't get the seller to pay that amount, and maybe, maybe it doesn't make sense for you financially to invest that money in the buy down. Just keep in mind that you're still, if it doesn't change your qualification or approval amount, you're still being qualified on that higher rate regardless. Yes, absolutely. Um, because we have to make sure you can make those payments when the time comes. So, yeah. um, but yes, you're absolutely, you're absolutely correct. The borrower must be pre-approved at the note rate, um, you know, and if the buy down doesn't make sense, we offer many other programs that we, that can help um, depending on the location of where you're living. So there yeah. are definite, there's definite options, but everybody's always pre-approved at that amount because if the buy down doesn't make sense, then that's the interest rate you're going to be paying if we put you into a different product. So, um, you yeah. know, and, and the buy down does go along with m almost all of the products that we offer. So, um, you know, with the exception of a, a few government, I don't have those exact details, but mm -hmm. they do go along with almost all of our products. So just to clarify, the products that she's mentioning would be like conventional loan, a v VA loan. Do you know if that would go along? Um, I don't think like VAs so. are part of it, but I don't know for sure. I don't want to okay. say yay or nay. Um, if anybody has a question on that one, just let us know on the side and we can Yep, and that. I can definitely get those details. Um, I didn't I didn't bring up all of them just because I wanted to focus on the the, yeah. the example so people could see the savings. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. So do you want to go over the example now and show us a little bit more? So we well, um, so pretty much it, it was the $600,000 loan amount, the one that I reviewed at the 6.75 and those savings, you know, $761 and 71 cents a month. That's a, that's a huge amount. Um, mm -hmm. so, and again, it's based on a $600,000 loan amount. Obviously I'm just using a higher amount, um, as the example, but you know, that's the first year and then the second year is the 39015 and then the total all together is the 13822. So that's 
that's a, a big chunk of change. It is, yeah. Um, so that they can use to do other improvements on the house or, you know, make extra payments on their mortgage if they want to. Yeah, um, to build that equity up. That way, when they decide to refinance, they are very comfortable with that. Yes, which yeah. you can do. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, that's, and that's big. But putting, maybe you keep making what the actual payment is um, at the, the 6.75 interest rate versus the 4.75. And, you know, you just put that extra down each month as, you know, just to, to put in that equity, but yeah. if you don't, it frees up that money for you. So when you buy a house, you are going to make changes. You're going to make that house yours. So, um, you know, I know, I know we did. Most people do. Yeah. Yeah. Mouse, just little changes. Yeah. So, but yeah, the savings is, is a big, is a big plus. Yeah. Yeah. You can put towards the house, you can put it towards the savings account, you can invest and then, you know, it just gives you that freedom and, and a little more comfortable um, moving to the when the race waiting for the race to come down, right? So it makes it a little right. bit more easier right. there coming into it. Um, so for the people that are out there, kind of like in limbo, not sure if this is the right time to buy. What are like three things that I would say that you, you could change their mind now that are beneficial to buyers as of today's market? So I I would say today's a great time to buy so yeah. the one big thing is houses are staying on the market more um and you are seeing so that's one thing you know yeah there's it, less means it means like better terms better ways to negotiate um because there's not as, as much competition now yep so that's that's, that's what i'm gonna say less, less competition um the other thing to seller assist um sellers are with with the market calming down a little bit you're getting some seller assist yeah. um because sell with the houses staying on the market longer you know some sellers they're they're ready to move too um you know so lo they're looking to give a little with getting the seller assist which also is big with the buy down and yeah. um you know that's you know whether they come down in price or stay in price it's the sellers are willing to help out <laughs> with, that, with selling their house. And um, I would say the third thing is, it, I would say now is, a, now is a good time to buy because especially with the buy down, you're most likely going to refinance when that refi boom happens. Yeah. It, I think that's a big reminder for people. It's just really like, okay, now is why we say is the right time and a lot of people are saying don't buy now but it, that's not right because there's more houses sitting in the market you have more options you come in if you are able to qualify for that house at the current rates that's all that matters right and yes. then if it makes sense to you financially monthly and you are able to um deal with that for a couple of years then then that makes sense and then um on top of that the better terms the seller's assistance you can get inspections then now you know it, it was mm -hmm. kind of crazy back then a year two years ago that people were just buying houses and having to wait everything they could possibly wait no inspection right. no appraisal paying over price um and now it's finally getting back to the norm where you can negotiate the price you can get actually other price asking you can get seller's assistance you can do your inspections you can ask for repairs which yes. is something that we didn't see it for a long time so and that's why this is important <laughs> Yes, yes. And then you don't yeah, want to move into a house and then have things break down and then you but you and you didn't know about it before you moved in because you didn't have an inspection. So even yeah. though everybody was waving them, almost everybody. Yeah, they, almost everybody. They, yeah. I would say inspections are super important oh, when you're moving sure. into a brand new house. Um, especially if it's an older home and you know, the people have been living in it longer. But yes, yeah. I would say that's definitely, you know, with the market you know, you don't have people coming in too much over. Not saying that's going away completely because it has not. It's not, it's it's not. Yeah, we do have pockets of heated markets that I'm going to be honest, they're still flying. They're still competitive. Uh, the houses are just coming and going. So don't think that's completely gone. I don't think certain markets will ever be buyers markets, regardless of what's going on in the market, um, because they're so heated and they're so like looked for 
for buyers in general. But overall, you know, national average is that we're switching into that buyer's market, especially with the end of the year coming. Like not many people want to buy over the holidays. So mm -hmm. if you are a qualified buyer that is comfortable with the rates that we have now, right? Because that's the key word. If you are comfortable making those payments for two, even maybe three years, because again, we don't have a crystal ball. We keep saying refinance, but we don't know how long that's going to be, right? So you got to be comfortable with your payments. But as soon as that's the case, just remember you're marrying the house and you're dating the rate. Correct. So we just don't know how long you're going to be dating the rate. That's that's the only, you know, question mark. But right. just keep that in mind. As soon as it makes sense to buy now to you, this is the better time to buy because no competition, you know, better terms. Um, so just everybody out there in limbo, not sure if you should buy or not. There are so many different um, alternatives now that you may want by now. It's just one of them that we wanted to talk about today. But there's so many different things out there, including grants. Maybe next time we can kind of go into all the options available within this area. So Kelly can kind of bring that out to you guys. Uh, but there's so much that you can kind of like harvest now as a buyer and get the better deal for yourself um, as soon as you come with those monthly payments with the current interest rate. That's really the key for everything. And back to what you were saying with the holidays, like, yeah. yes, if you're on the fence, um, you know, you can get pre-approved. Like now, now would be the time your pre-approval is good for 90 days. You know, yeah. if you get pre-approved in, you know, the end of November, December, you know, when that spring market comes out, you know, it's very, most likely there's going to be more people putting their homes on the market. So you would probably see those numbers that Nini went over go up with homes being on the market for buyers. Yeah. So now is the time to get a pre-approval, whether it's for the buy down or just for any of the other products that we offer. Um, but now's the time because it's it's good for, and I will let you know how long it's good for. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you'll know that that date, that drop dead date when you know when it expires. But you know that just means we repull credit and we yeah. look at things. But um, but ninety days that that's you know December, January, February. Which is the best time for new buyers because yes. when it comes February, March, then we're getting into more a surge of buyers coming into, back into the market because tax season, right? Everybody's getting their tax returns. So you definitely see a natural rise every year over year, no matter what. You see a mm -hmm. rise of buyers into that period of time. So if you want to avoid that, because again, that means more competition to you as a buyer. So if you can buy before that surge comes, that's the better time to do it. It's over yes. the holidays. I know it's stressful to do something maybe over the holidays, but you can start looking in December, maybe get on a contract in January, and then you get yourself a better deal instead of waiting into March when the sun is out. Right. <laughs> um, and everybody's out too. It's not just you. So um, if you are able to buy now, I would say it's smart to do so. It's just a smart move instead of waiting, you know, to see what happens because everybody's doing that. And then mm -hmm. you're going to be competing with everybody. You know? yep. so, I, I, really I agree. December is definitely the time to get pre-approved. If you can get into a home, January, February, even though it'll be cold in winter. I mean, hopefully it's not a bad winter, but I know. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, I already got a day of snow in November. <laughs> I was like, what's going on? I know. I know. I it went from right. warm to cold and <laughs> it's cold. <laughs> it's cold now. Yeah, it was officially cold. I think we're we're going to just the yeah. winter time officially. Yeah. yeah. No, I yeah. think I think this that's a good good time. So, and then if anybody is like wanting to maybe learn more about what's available um, and maybe your a specific situation, if you want to chat about it to see what you can get, to you know what kind of programs are available to you, what kind of grants you may be uh, an option for you, just reach out to me and Callie. We'll be happy to go over your situation. Callie can really help you on the financing side. Yep. And once she gets you, you know, ready to go, I can help you find that home. So we're here to help you guys move forward if you have questions. So this is just like um, a good start for us. We want to share as much information and good content for you as possible. And if you have any additional questions, you can always reach out to us on the side. You have my information and her information going here at the bottom. So, you know, um, just feel free to reach out at any time. Uh, we'll yep. be happy to answer any questions.
Yep. Everybody's situation is different. So it definitely makes sense to give us both a call with any questions. You know, when it comes to the financing side, like I said, we have lots of options and, you know, I may be able to meet something that meets your criteria. So um, it just makes sense to talk about it just to figure it out. Yeah. And uh, also to go over some some like um, myths, right? Especially mm -hmm. with military people, they think they have to work with a lender that is like Veterans United or maybe something or something related to military. But to please know that, no, that's that's not true. And right. unfortunately, majority of times they are more expensive for the buyer mm -hmm. uh, overall, especially their fees are pretty steep. So um, Kelly can help you with military loans as well, uh, just Absolutely. so you guys know. You do not have to work with a specific realtor either because I've heard people thinking that. Um, so any realtor, myself included, <laughs> can help you with military loans. And I'm a military person myself, I'm a veteran. So I have a lot of experience with the, the VA loans as well. So we can help you together get that VA yep. um, loan pre-approval. So just know that that's, that's a big myth out there. And I just wanted to clarify it too. It is a big myth. I talk yeah. to a lot of realtors and people that they're like, oh, I went through, what was it? Veterans United. United yeah. Um, and I'm like, oh, I said, well, we, you know, we offer the VA loans. So um, you don't, that's like the, the first thing that pops up when you type in VA loan. VA loan, yeah. Yeah. The Veterans United. So no, it does not have to be even Veterans United. So we definitely do VA loans. I've done several for Nini and um, some other people that I know that are veterans. A couple friends of mine um, are veterans that I've done loans for. So yeah. 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 Well, that's the myth of the day, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we bring up a myth of the day every every episode. Right. Well, it was just Veterans Day, so that was a good myth to. I know, like we just about. passed this month, so I wanted to bring that up because uh, I think that's a big one. So yeah, we are yeah. here to help all veterans alike <laughs> and, and other buyers. So yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time, Kelly. I think Absolutely. this is a good first start. I'm excited. So maybe next time we'll bring something uh, a little different, maybe helping with the grant side. We can talk yeah, the grant that. side for first time home buyers would be a good one to talk yeah. about. That would, that would be great. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, uh, guys. We look forward to seeing you next time as well. So um, yes. hopefully next time we'll go actually live so we can be talking to you guys um, and, and answer your questions as they pop up. So. Stay tuned. <laughs> have a great weekend. And have a good one.